welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lamb upon the throne, who reigns forevermore. For my eyes have seen the King, is the Lamb upon the throne, who reigns forevermore? I see the Lord. I see the Lord. He's exalted high above the worship of the people who love the earth. I see the Lord, I see the Lord, for my eyes have seen the King, is the Lamb upon the throne who reigns forevermore. Can you pray for one more minute? We're still praying. Elanto sabratis kala krofeni kaparatu sieta, kradila kaparatu safriski amaratu sibras, sipalatu sabrati kipala kuparata. Take us higher by your spirit. Enda shali kaparas sabrati kiparatu skufrati malatu sieta. Ela parato sabrati kiparatu sabrati. For in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me say this to you before we sit. You must earnestly, earnestly desire the presence of God in your life. You must, you must invest in hosting his presence. It's an investment and it has returns. The Holy Spirit lives in all believers. That is not what I'm talking about. Mm. There is a level of spiritual investment you can make through hunger, sacrifice, and alignment. You've heard me say you can fake power, but you cannot fake his presence. No. There is counterfeit power, not counterfeit presence. Hallelujah. There are many things you would not need to explain when you carry his presence. Most of the time, our, a lot of noise that we make is just an attempt to cover for the absence of divine presence. Because you see, every human spirit was so designed to know when God is there and even as an unbeliever you are able to to pick the impulses of the spirit when his presence comes it doesn't take much to know it doesn't take much to understand it doesn't even take much to be changed the second reason why you need to seek the presence of God is because other people can become a beneficiary of your atmosphere are we together now atmospheres are not transferable but you can be a beneficiary of a man's secret place that when you step out you step out with that glory 
haven't mantled you that everyone who is within your spiritual circumference can come under the influence of that glory it is true what makes men powerful yes is the anointing but in truth the bible tells us the secret for god was with him for god was with him he went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him let's turn this to a prayer request in one minute lord i desire your presence in greater dimensions please say that prayer and then we'll be seated your presence i desire your presence desire your presence I desire your presence. To see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy hope one more time we'll see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love. Spirit of the living God, help us this morning. Let Jesus be glorified in all that we do. Amen and amen. Please, I'd like you to be seated. Thank you. We see Jesus, part two we see jesus part two yesterday we began to discuss along this subject and um, we considered a few things let me do a quick recap number one we established the fact that the bible calls the sojourn of the believer on earth a race paul was mentoring us and then he taught us that it is important for every believer to carry the mentality of an athlete and he said we are in a race he calls this kingdom come adventure he calls your press to live out your destiny a race and then he tells us that in that race there are various possibilities that exist number one is that you can run in futility that your doom can already be predicted from the start of the race but number two he says you can so run such that you win such that you obtain and your winning there describes your dominion your winning there describes your ability to allow the glory of god find expression in your life to be a blessing to your world to be a manifestation of the hand of god he says there are men who have sojourned and they obtained in this journey he calls them the cloud of witnesses are we together now then he says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us so we established yesterday that all believers in fact all men are in a race destiny actualization is called in bible language a race number two we establish the fact that there is a formula that is responsible for victory that if and when an individual runs and wins it is because he ran so in keeping with a spiritual formula that guarantees winning are we together and i told us that this formula is first a spiritual posture that you must take and then number two it is an orientation that you must have and paul simply calls it looking unto jesus that there is a way men can run such that they win 
regardless what it is they win we examined a few things about the concept of looking and that the first definition is centered around focus void of distraction that when we see an individual looks onto jesus you have found a way of placing your gaze you have you have you have learned how to shed off distractions and your gaze is upon jesus number two when we look onto jesus it is a communication of our dependence the bible says it this way the just shall live by faith total dependence total dependence number three when you look onto jesus you have come to that reality that he is the worthy pattern we call him the pattern man that means you study him so that you model your life and you model your work on earth after the image that you see and we told us yesterday that there are implications to looking onto jesus number one is that when we look we see there is no blindness when we look when we look onto jesus we see what do we see we see light we see strategies we see pathways we understand the mysteries that help us to transit to a life of dominion and power number two when we look onto jesus we are changed we are changed we are changed we are changed into the very image we're looking at number three when we look we are empowered are we together to demonstrate the reality of that which we have seen the bible says the apostles with great power gave witness to the resurrection of the lord jesus christ because they eventually saw the resurrected christ they were empowered to defend the fact that it, he was alive and every time the devil or situations and circumstances try to fight that reality of him being the resurrected Christ there was power enough the Bible says great grace was upon them all are you ready for this morning so we'll take part two this morning and we'll look at a few things so when we look we see we see patterns we see pathways we see mysteries when we look we are changed transformation when we look we are empowered to manifest the glory i want to teach you this morning how to look onto jesus i'm hoping that we invest a bit of time this morning in prayer it's important this is a praying church uh, but conferences like this open up doors for people across the body of christ to be part of this and among the things that people must learn is how to translate the speakings of God to prayer. Are we together? Something happens when you take the word of God to the place of prayer. I'm not teaching on prayer now, but just for you to know that what gives power to your prayer is the level of spiritual intelligence that supports your prayer. It is beyond the energy that is dissipated in prayer. You can pray energetically, sincerely, but pray amiss. What gives life and power to prayer is the degree of the word compliancy of that prayer. Many people pray. Africans pray a lot. But the ratio of results we get versus the energy dissipated it is, is a source of concern. It then means that most of our prayer is full of shadow boxing. What gives accuracy to prayer is when it becomes fervent, that means heartfelt, then it becomes effectual, that means word compliant. The Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have, that when we ask anything according to his will, we know that he heareth us. The condition according to his will. Hallelujah. Are we learning? so we'll be learning this morning how to look onto jesus so that it does not remain an abstract concept looking onto jesus it is important for us to know seeing that our destiny our evolving our becoming depends on looking onto him and that there are consequences there are implications if we fail to look onto him one of it is powerlessness. One of it is that we are stunted and we are not able to make kingdom progress. 
Number three, it inhibits our capacity to become effective witnesses. Because a witness essentially is a validator. Are we together now? And you, the confidence of a witness is in the fact that he has an evidence to present. If a witness does not have an evidence, he has failed to be a witness. How to look unto Jesus? Most believers do not understand the law of transformation. Most believers do not know how to be changed from the weaker versions of themselves to the stronger versions of themselves. So let me start it this way. Please let me your attention now. There is a progression in our spirit walk that evolves men to become mighty or leaves them as weak people, even though believers. It's important I run through this, would I call it a crash course, so that I get us in the same page. Number one, everybody, everybody who appears on earth, please listen carefully, everybody who appears on earth comes with the nature of sin inherent within them. Are we together now? He says, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. There's nobody who is born again by default. Are we together? Products of the first Adam and the fall. Now, every, the starting point of everyone is an unsaved person. Unsaved. 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 You can be an unsaved believer. Yes, everybody who believed in Jesus was not saved because he had not died, yet they believed and he commended them for believing him. It is possible for an unbeliever to, re to receive healing, but he still remains an unbeliever. Believing and being saved are two different things. Believing helps you to be saved, but salvation is a different discussion. Are we together? So that you verify whether you just believed or you are saved. The Bible tells us that there is a protocol, there is a formula to being saved. And the formula is very simple. That you must get to a point where, number one, you hear the gospel. When you hear the gospel, then the Bible tells us that you believe that report. It is not every information about Jesus that saves. There are things you believe about Jesus that does not add up to anything as far as your salvation is concerned. Believing Jesus was a good man. You are right, but it does not save you. Believing Jesus was a prophet, you are right, but it does not save you. There are three revelations of Jesus that translate to salvation. Jesus as Savior, Lord, and Christ. That was the first sermon in Acts chapter 2. Let it be known to you, O Israel, Peter said, that this same Jesus whom you have crucified has today been exalted as Lord and Christ. The Bible says they were caught to the heart and they said, men and brethren, what do we do? It says, repent for the remission of your sins. Are we together? And then you shall be baptized. Then receive of this promise for the promise is unto you, to your children, your children's children, as many as are far off, even those whom the Lord will call. So how do we get saved? You will be amazed at how many believers do not know how salvation happens. Confessing an empty prayer does not translate to salvation. The business of salvation is the business of the heart and the mouth. The heart first, then the mouth. If the mouth confesses what the heart did not believe, you were not saved. The Bible says the protocol is that with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Then with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, is the word soteria. Are we together now? So with the heart, man believes. The question is that you believe what? You believe that Jesus came. You believe that Jesus died. You believe that he resurrected by the glory of the Father. Are we together? And that all that was a communication of the Father's love for you. It matters what you believe. Do I show you the gospel? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's just, let's, just, let's just touch this since I'm there. 1 Corinthians 15, please, from verse 1. Media, please help us. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 1. Are you ready? Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, 
and wherein ye stand verse 2 by which ye are saved if ye keep in memory what i preached unto you unless you have believed in vain now here is the gospel i delivered unto you first of all that which i also received what is the gospel how that christ died for our sins according to the scripture verse 4 how that he was buried and how that he rose again on the third day according to the scripture now the bible tells us that when a man so believes this truth and confesses the lordship of christ three things happen to you immediately in honor to this declaration number one you receive the forgiveness of sin number two you receive an imputation of righteousness you become the righteousness of god in christ number three that gives you access to what we call eternal life not an accurate expression the real expression there is zoe it is beyond eternal life it is beyond everlasting life it's fair enough for us to accept it since king james teaches us that but i'm telling you classically what you received is beyond eternal life is beyond everlasting life it is called the way it's not even god's kind of life it is god's very life every life on earth is god's life of his fullness we have received whether plants or animals they are all god's life but there is a kind of life he gave us his very life are we together now it's called the way now that life is a very mysterious life i'm not talking on that and i don't want to distract my focus but it's important for you to know most believers do not even know what they have received it is not a life that makes you to breathe more it's not just a life without death it's beyond that are we together now yes it's a life that is empowered with all the resources that insists that you manifest in the god class are we together now yes the Bible says, I am come that ye may have life and that you have it more abundantly. So you receive in honor to salvation, forgiveness of sins, righteousness, and the life of God. Are we clear on that? You are called a believer the moment you are saved. However, when you get into the kingdom, the dynamics change. I hope you realize that when you get saved, that is not all the journey. In fact, truly, that is your admission into the journey of the spirit walk. Most believers plateau the moment they are saved. Sadly, because they were wrongly mentored and they were not taught that there is a journey beyond that initial salvation. Everyone who is saved is called a babe, is called an infant. Are we together? You are a believer, but you are an infant. The meaning of that is that although you have potentially speaking the life of God resident within your spirit, you cannot do much both for your destiny and for the kingdom because manifesting as a witness is growth dependent. And so God introduces three spiritual ministries to an infant to sponsor your transition never forget this number one he introduces the ministry of the holy spirit number two he introduces the ministry of the word number three he introduces the ministry of the teaching priest if for any reason in your spiritual adventure you lack one of these ministries this is where your lopsidedness starts accuracy in growth and transition in the spirit happens to any believer who is fortunate enough to encounter to be taught the value of the ministry of the holy spirit to be taught the ministry of the word the logos of god and to be given access to tutelage under a teaching priest these tripartite ministries begin to transit you from a babe until you get to a point of maturity you are still a believer but now you are not just an infant are we together you grow by the accurate communication of the word line upon line precept upon precept the holy spirit helps to build your capacity then you get to a point where you are called a transformed believer you are a believer, but now a transformed believer. You have attained unto a state of maturity through knowledge. Through knowledge. Through knowledge. Are we together? However, even at this point, you are still limited. Something is still missing. 
you cannot be called a witness at this point because you are not yet empowered to be transformed means you are enlightened renewed but you do not yet have the grace component to defend the things that you know so after teaching the disciples for three and a half years he told them still tarry you're not bankrupt of information you are bankrupt of power they were never called witnesses until the holy ghost came with power are we together now the next step after transformation is empowerment it is at the point of empowerment your name changes from a believer to a witness so you are not just a believer now you have become a witness you now have the resources to represent the purposes of god with accuracy and power you can preach jesus you can live out your destiny you are empowered enough enlightened enough are we together and then the requisite level of grace and then the journey continues because the empowerment and the transformation are in measures it keeps recycling as you grow greater light greater empowerment you rise higher greater light greater empowerment you rise higher greater light greater empowerment you rise higher so the bible says the path of the just is as a shining light are we together it starts like the dawning of a new day a little light a little empowerment then you exhaust a level then a thousand cubits is measured for you again another kind of light another kind of empowerment that becomes your journey until you attain a level of stature in the spirit where god can commit the destinies of nations the destiny of continents to you because you have gained so much weight in the spirit you have become such an advantage to his program this is where god intends to take every one of us are we learning now it was important that i said this do you understand me so far so there are people in every conference even including this those who are even outside of the faith they've not started the journey they are unsaved but fair enough god brought them to be saved then there are many who are saved but are still at the level of infancy unfortunately you can be an infant for a very long time very long time you can witness others grow while you remain an infant witnessing growth does not mean you are growing are we together now you can be a witness to growth but you are not growing yourself the same way there are many people who walk in the airport but they've never flown it and uh, they've never flown uh, what do we call it now they've never flown a plane they can direct you they can tell you if you are late they can help you to gain speed but they've never entered an aircraft never teach you how to check in help you you know help you to redeem coupons they they know they understand the hacks in the airport but they've never entered an aircraft there are many people like that around the corridors of salvation escorting many while they are healed escorting many while they are transformed but they never grow themselves i pray you are not part of that list then we have those who are transformed if you depend on their speakings you will be impressed but time for results you will be disappointed they speak well they are not ignorant they just do not have the grace to defend what they know so they tell you god heals they can teach you mysteries upon mysteries but in the presence of reality they fall short for these ones you need the empowerment of the spirit are we learning now so um that was a digression by the way i needed to say that so that we we'll get back to our teaching so how to look unto jesus i have four keys here for this morning so that we can have a bit of time to pray the first way the bible teaches to look unto jesus is to acknowledge his lordship over your life the first way just like i just illustrated the first way the bible teaches to look unto jesus is to acknowledge his lordship over your life and then as part of that acknowledgement to be spiritually minded we look on to jesus first and foremost by our willing acknowledgement of his lordship over our lives and then we press further to be spiritually minded colossians chapter 3 please from verse 1 
to 2. Colossians 3. I'm hearing laughter in the spirit. No, no, no. I don't mean I'm prophesying laughter. I'm hearing somebody laugh. It's the, not, I'm, this is by the spirit. It's, don't mind me. It's one of these my things. I'm just telling you what I'm hearing. <laughs> I'm not saying you should laugh. <laughs> that, <laughs> that would be silly, isn't it? But I'm just telling you that I'm hearing laughter. Now, they have, they have, um, they have, there's a way that God communicates to people. There are times he uses similitude. But then I'm saying this by the Spirit. So sometimes I say these things because uh, laughter is not, it's not, when we see these things happen in church, don't confuse what we are doing with a lot of foolishness that happens on the pulpit. Let me balance that. Uh, praise the Lord. So don't mix everything together and think everyone is wasting your time on stage. This is a spirit communication. It's a mystery in the spirit. Laughter is connected to victory. Laughter is connected to joy. Laughter is connected to dominion. Are we together? So, it is part of the operation of the apostolic. God uses similitudes and he speaks out his counsel to men. So that when things are happening like this, it, it shouldn't distract you when you are well mentored. It is just a sign that God is doing something. It's a note of victory within your spirit man. Are we together? That is why the communicators of this grace must be matured enough. You see that now. So uh, there are times that unfortunately something as little as this can become a distraction and we veer off immediately. No. God is saying something. What I'm saying and what she's saying by the Spirit is still flowing. He's just telling you that in line with what you are hearing, there is victory that is coming out of what you are hearing. These are the speakings of the Spirit. This used to happen in Papa Hagin's meetings where people begin to laugh out in the spirit and very strangely and out of there they return with strange testimonies. Bills written off, sicknesses living, just like that. You see, let me tell you, every spiritual activity that does not carry the signature of liberty or the revelation of Christ is demonic. Agreed, it should be, mis it can be very, very... Um, mysterious if i will call it but when we forgive all of that mystery we must see the result that that experience produced because god hates waste that's why he gathers 12 crumbs the basket so god cannot come and just give an experience and say a lady or a gentleman is laughing or running or falling okay we are, we are spiritual enough to forget to forgive all of that but what results how is christ revealed through that experience so we must look out for the testimonies that follow <laughs> hallelujah be spiritually minded it says if ye then be risen with christ we're discussing looking unto jesus now and that the first way we look unto jesus is by acknowledging his lordship over our lives and then being spiritually minded. If ye be risen with Christ, he says, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated at the right hand of God. Read verse 2 with me, please. Ready? One to go. Set your affection on things above. One more time, please. You know what your affection is? Whatever it is that is worthy of your attention. Are we together? Whatever it is that is worthy of your focus. He says that if you are truly looking unto Jesus, it must affect your appetites. It must affect your affection. Are we together? It's impossible to say you are looking unto Jesus and you become beguiled and distracted by everything. No. No. When you look on to Jesus, it's a commitment to tame your appetite. He supplies the grace, but you supply your will. Did you hear what I said? He supplies the grace, but you supply your will. If the grace is available and you do not partner with your will, it will make the grace of non-effect. Set your affection. 
there are many believers who cannot do business with God because we want to enjoy the kingdom and part of us is still scattered around the world. Parts of us. Everything distracts us. Everything calls for our attention. Life has various pieces of you and it can stimulate any part of you away from your focus. Now, when you are doing this business of intimacy with Jesus, there is a level of dedicated focus. He must become your obsession. There are people who claim they love Jesus Christ and they are not affectionate towards him. Imagine someone who is saying, I love you, and is looking somewhere else and distracted and talking and say, just to remind you, I'm passionately in love with you. And you are watching, you say, what is wrong with this person? No. That statement is a lie because your all is not there. Set your affection. There are many people who use Jesus. They don't love him. They use Jesus as a charm for a great life. set your affection that you love him with all your heart he becomes your obsession your mind is thinking about him thinking about the things of the spirit you don't have to be reminded to open up your bible you don't have to be reminded to pray it is a love affair not a burden we have translated these things to be burdensome rituals and many people practice them just to ease guilt it's not sponsored by love there are many preachers who don't pray because they love god they pray because they have to demonstrate that they are serious spiritually it's a terrible burden it's like a wife serving her husband because she has to i found myself in marriage with him so what do i do here's your meal Are we together? Imagine the joy as she comes. She's happy. She's excited. You're, you're back from wherever. And then the man is buying something for his wife from a trip. And he's happy. He's not dragging it like a luggage. to say, okay, I just came back from the trip. You open up whatever you find there. That's how many people deal with this business of God. All right, since you said pray, how many hours am I to pray? And, and we frown ourselves through and amen. We're in a hurry to go out. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. Listen, that which God has in store for them that love him. I tell you, when you get into this love affair with Jesus Christ, at that point you manifest as the bride of Christ. Then you will see what it means to be married to a good husband. Your Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man. As calm as the man is, you touch his wife. Then you will know that this love has energy. It's, it's, are we together now? Many of us do not realize that we are the bride of Christ. But when love is missing, everything is missing. Set your affection. God is speaking to someone here. You are distracted. Yeah, a part of you loves God, but a part of you dangerously loves money. Another part loves power. Another part loves fame. Another part loves partying. Another part loves Babylon. Another part loves Sodom and Gomorrah. Pieces of gather all of you and dedicate them towards Jesus. I'm not teaching you to be a fanatic. I'm teaching you to be a winner. Hallelujah. There is no man who sets his affection on Christ and the things of God and becomes a failure. Mm. Yes, sir. Even using the manipulations and dark powers, eh, your level of devotion equals the level of empowerment you have. Is that not true? You meet people who practice all kinds of things. There is a level of consecration and devotion the word consecration is a very interesting word. It, it means separated unto. Separated unto. Not just abstinence from. It means devotion unto. If your only idea of consecration is abstinence from, it is not complete. You abstain from, then that energy is converted to be devoted unto something. If you abstain from and the energy is there and it's not being used, you will go back again. 
Are we together now? Abstinence from devotion unto. Abstinence from the energy you use to serve the devil, to serve sin, to serve the flesh. That energy must be converted in loving Jesus and serving the purposes of Jesus. So we look unto Jesus when we acknowledge his lordship over our lives and we set our affections on him. Number two. Are you ready? <clears throat> we look unto Jesus when we study and engage the scriptures. We look unto Jesus when we study and engage the scriptures. John chapter 5, please, and verse 39. Jesus himself was speaking. John 5 and verse 39. Shamala kusiata balakubarantu siata. Let's read together, please. One to read. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. He says, and they are they which testify. They testify of me. They testify of me. So every time you study the Bible, you open up scripture, you are looking unto Jesus. They testify of me. Luke chapter 24 from verse 25. This was Jesus joining with the two men in Emmaus. Remember the story? Yes. Now he had resurrected from the dead. John chapter 24. Yes. And verse 25. So the background is that he was probing into the discussion they were having. And unknown to them that it was Jesus. He said, so what are you talking about? They said, are you a stranger in this land? You've not heard about the man mighty indeed. Very great guy. They just crucified him and this man died like that. And then he started probing them further. And when we get to verse 25, he said, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Next verse. He says, Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? and to enter into his glory he's telling them that didn't you read it was it not part of the sermons that the pharisees told you while you were in the temple there was already a revelation of him in scripture 27 i like this verse 27 media it says and beginning at moses and all the prophets the bible says he expounded unto them in all the scripture the things concerning himself the things where do you find the things concerning himself in the scripture who is learning this morning so when you say you are looking unto jesus and you stand in front of a mirror you are practicing divination looking unto jesus is not standing in front of a mirror and doing all of these funny things that people do no the idea look does not just mean stand, even though the Bible talks about looking into the mirror, the perfect law of liberty is using metaphors to explain something. You look when you study. You look when you read. You look when you engage. Are we together? The scripture gives us an accurate revelation of Christ. Now, please look up. I have taught this and many of you perhaps you have listened to it um, in my teachings but let me say this now that I'm speaking to you officially in South Africa yeah. hallelujah the Bible is an accurate manual but the accuracy of the Bible is only in its ability to reveal Christ nothing more when you test the accuracy of the Bible using any other reference, it will fall short. Did you hear what I said? So when we say scripture is accurate, it is accurate in its ability to reveal the plan of God and to reveal Christ. I hope you know that there's a history to this Bible, the 66 books that were canonized. I don't want to get into that. There are many other texts that did not make these 66 books as we know. You know that already? Yeah. 
Even the Bible says many other miracles Jesus did which were not recorded in this book. And the Bible to many is an archaeological material. There are many unbelievers who needed to make reference to scripture in having their theological dissertations. Am I right on that? They consulted many books. For instance, if you are doing a PhD in world religions, you would have to read the Quran, you would have to read the Bible, you have to read the Torah, you have to read a lot of other books. Am I, am I right on that? And we, we, you don't have to believe them, but you will be mandated to make reference to those materials. So when we say that scripture is accurate, we are saying it is accurate not just from a linguistic standpoint. There were many errors in translating Latin, Greek, Hebrew, Abrahamite to English. Are we together? Yes. You will see a lot of inaccuracy even in the perspectives of the men who were used to write it. There are many things, for instance, they credited to God. You will read things like a lying spirit came out, came from the Lord. By the revelation of Jesus, we know that that is inconsistent with God's character. Are we together now? Because the people who were used by God were also growing. They saw in part and they prophesied within the parts that they saw. Uh, hopefully, maybe in the night, I will, I will, I, I can't say remind me, but if you have the grace to tell you the three assignments of Jesus while he, when he came upon the earth. One of it was to correct our understanding about God. The first assignment of Jesus Christ when he walked upon the earth was not to die. He came as a pattern man to be a marking script to correct our understanding about the God we never knew. Because we had to depend on what the prophets told us God was. And they made mistakes in their own understanding of God too. So Jesus came to correct our understanding. Everything the prophet said God was, we have to verify using the reference Jesus. And if we did not see Jesus walk in that reality, then it gives us the spiritual credence to probe what they said they saw. When Jesus appeared, the Bible says he was tempted in all ways yet without sin. The Bible says he came full of grace and truth. So we know that a lying spirit could not have come from God. Now we're not angry, at least we appreciate the prophets for doing their best. If you were in their shoes, maybe you would have written nonsense. <laughs> so we thank them for going that far to help us. But that is why Jesus came. Because what they did was not good enough. Are we learning now? So I needed to say that. However, you must respect the position of scripture if you want to grow. Many believers do not study scripture. Our level of spiritual ignorance translates to defeat. You are as defeated as your level of ignorance. Let me say that again. You are as defeated as your level of spiritual ignorance. Sincerity of hearts does not automatically translate to victory. There are many sincere people who will remain defeated because the requisite level of spiritual understanding is not there. This is one of the primary assignment of the teaching priest. Jeremiah 3 and verse 15. And I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and they will feed you, the Bible says, with wisdom. They will feed you with knowledge. They will feed you with understanding. That means if you are a man of God and you are not teaching your people, you are not helping them. Um, if you cannot teach, find someone who teaches. Throw away your ego and feed God's people. Make sure they learn. Hallelujah. Miracles draw multitudes, but mentorship through the accurate communication of doctrine and scripture is what builds believers. Did you hear that? So the miraculous is supposed to be a tool that draws men. It's like the burning bush. When they are now settled, then you now begin to teach them doctrine, line upon line, precept upon precept. That is what enables believers to attain onto a state of maturity. If you're understanding me, say amen. amen. So number one, we look onto Jesus when we acknowledge his lordship and set our affection on him, void of distraction. Number two, we invest in studying and engaging the scripture. Please listen, ladies and gentlemen. We invest in studying and engaging the scripture. 
studying and engaging the scripture number three how do we look unto jesus we behold and we look unto jesus as we invest time in prayer and worship prayer and worship prayer and worship these are vital components prayer and worship if you do not spend time in prayer and spend time in worship you will never truly be able to engage you see remember this look unto jesus i hope you've not forgotten that it is the formula for the believer's victory and so we are breaking down that formula now that for you to be victorious you will have to set your affection on things above and not on the things earthly number two you must respect the supremacy of the word of god as final authority in all matters are we together and you must also obtain grace to engage not just here not just study theologically speaking let me back to number two i just fell to add this there are four ways according to scripture that we engage scripture for our profiting did you get what i just said there are four ways the ministry of the word profits the believer only if and when we engage it in four ways number one we study the word number two are we together now we speak the word making declarations of faith number three we hear the word because faith comes by hearing you study you hear you declare you obey these are the four ways to engage scripture for your profiting if you study alone you have done well but that is one over four you will not get results from it if you hear alone that is wonderful but you will not get results from it you must study then hear then declare then obtain grace to obey this is how to profit from scripture so if the word of god is not working for you verify if you are engaging it this thorough are you this thorough do you declare the word now there are many people say what, what is all these declarations i'm not in it unfortunately your life will be defeated i guarantee you because the first revelation of god in the bible was as a speaking spirit and if you become silent over your destiny, the capacity to speak is how you release your will. If you are silent, any assumption on you is right. Did you hear what I said? If you are silent, any assumption on you is right. If you are silent, I can assume you want to die. If you are silent, I can assume you do not intend to go forward. So the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The blessed of the Lord say so. The lifted of the Lord say so. The anointed of the Lord say so. Say so. Say so. Say so. Ah, my life is blessed. My well watered garden. No weapon fashioned against me will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me falls in judgment. This is what I believe. Honestly, I believe it. The righteousness that is of faith speaks. It doesn't assume. It speaks. The righteousness that is of faith is not silent. In the name of Jesus, everything I lay my hands to do is blessed. Strangers shall feed my flock. I will call on one person and a nation will answer. Yes, sir. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. I'm saying my own. Don't watch me. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? The Lord is the strength of my light. Do you know what happens to you? L listen, 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 listen. Imagine that you go to the place of prayer, ladies and gentlemen, and you are making these bold declarations of faith. If that is what you are saying, you can look at your mirror. Oh, you need it. You can stand there and say, Joshua Selman, in the name of Jesus, you go from glory to glory. You are the just and the Bible says your path. I will never have a better yesterday. No, sir. It's against the economy of heaven. Every time you see me, I am an improved, more anointed,
greater version of myself. That even in old age, age is not an excuse, I will be fat and flourishing. You see, your realities are defined by your convictions. They are not defined by another person's wish for you. If another person wishes you evil, unfortunately, God so branded your destiny and left it at the mercy of your own conviction. Whether I like you or not makes no difference as far as your, listen, opinions are the cheapest products on earth. Don't waste your time buying them. Their value is so small. It's a total waste of your time. What has he said concerning me? Lo, I come in the volume of the book. I'm showing you how to look unto Jesus. That in the place of prayer, you get there and you begin to engage. There are times that I just allow, and, and you know, technology has helped us. That's why we have no excuse, ladies and gentlemen. There's Bible on MP3. There's customized speakings, healing scriptures. Scriptures on deliverance. Sometimes you can just let it run while you are cooking. The same way you learn very bad songs without learning them. You listen to them a lot until they got into your spirit. And one day while you hear it, you find yourself reciting a line accurately. Then you ask for forgiveness later on. That's the power of consistency. You wake up in the morning and while you are dragging, let the word speak to you. I'm not telling you what I'm preaching. I'm telling you how I live. Victory is a formula. There are certain atmospheres that will never be around me. No, 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 sir. No, sir. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance, build you up. There is an inheritance for me. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. The worlds and they that dwell therein. Are we together now? Honestly, I believe this with all my heart. I am favored of the Lord. I enter every nation as if they are owing me something. Forgive me if I sound arrogant, but I don't plan to change. Sweet. Sweet. So you get, I'm showing you how to look unto Jesus using the tool of prayer and worship. An atmosphere is just, you create that atmosphere in the morning. Yeshua. Ah, this is you waking up in the morning. Yeshua. Eh, eh. Ah, ah. And in the midst of that atmosphere, you are praying. Blessed be the name of the Lord who had blessed me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Grafted into Christ in the name of Jesus. Exalted above principalities and powers, above thrones and dominions. This is you looking unto Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. Not the Lord and Satan. The Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. And the Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. The thoughts of peace and of evil. I mean, and not of evil, to bring you an expected end. The hand of God is at work in my life. The Bible declares that whatsoever he doeth prospers. Failure is far from me far from me far from me i use my will to reject it far from me far from me far from me the book of remembrance is open for my sake in the name of jesus he places me in the hearts of kings i have access to gatekeepers in the name that is above all names 
Listen, this is how we reign. This is how it works. Anybody who preaches you away from this mindset has destroyed your destiny. I'm telling you sincerely. Before Jesus died, he prophesied that he would die, but he would come back to life. If he kept quiet, the grave would not open. Because there was no man on earth who would have called him back. Now listen, the law of resurrection is that for every man, there must be another man with a human body who has access to the earth that will call someone from outside of this realm into this realm. Nobody resurrected on his own. There were resurrections before Jesus. What makes his own special was that no man called him back. Are we together now? Every other resurrection, a man has to call you. But you see, even though no man called him, he left a prophetic word. Words don't die. He said, I will die, destroy this temple, but I'll bring it back. And after three days, the word went into motion. That means I can send a word to my next week. I can send a word to my October. Come on now. My December. I can send a word to 2025. Schedule yourself like ushers and create a triumphant entry for me. As I enter this nation, it will not be with shame and reproach. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, by the mercies of God, I know what I'm saying. I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. Are we together? You get up in the morning and you teach your son before he goes to school. Tell him, my son, say after me, I'm a champion. Because you belong to a victorious family. When you look at Jesus, what do you see? Listen, if all you see is a crown of thorns and blood, you are not seeing well. Because that reality only existed for three days. Let me tell you what I see when I look at him. I see victory. I see glory. I see dominion. And the Bible says, as he is. Say, if you ask me, Apostle, how will you be in five years? I'll say, give me a minute. Let me check Jesus. I, I, I have to use the Bible to answer you because any other answer I give you will be a foolish answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How will House of Treasures be in 2027? Don't be quick to answer. There it is. In old age, they will be fat and flourishing. There is no going up and coming down for me. Forget about that. Anyone waiting for you to go down will wait forever. You have surrounded yourself with mysteries like chariots. They preserve you. The Bible says wisdom and understanding shall be the stability of your times. Listen, listen. If you don't know how results happen, you will be afraid of them when they happen. Because you can't reproduce it. You can benefit from someone else's spiritual atmosphere and have a temporary result, but you'll be afraid because the capacity to sustain it is not there. You're a business person, you get up and you declare, in the name that is above all names, my products are desired. Nobody buys my product only once. They will come again by the spirit of the living God because I am an ambassador. It is true. Hallelujah. When your business is not growing, change your audience in prayer. Change your audience. You only receive the king's reward when you serve kings. Are we together? You lay your hands on your head and say, There is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty maketh men of understanding. 
I had been saying this thing for years. I declared it that it is not only the church that will receive of my value. I was not sent to the church. I was sent to a generation. And every system under that generation must acknowledge the hand of God. Hallelujah. Are we together? Looking unto Jesus. Your prayer life becomes exciting. It depends on what you do there. I don't go to pray as a, as a, a burden to, to appease the guilt of spirituality. Not into all that nonsense. I'm in a serious business of fellowship for my growth and transformation. Are we together? Now, there are disciplines to prayer, but a better motivation for prayer is passion. Passion. That every time I go in there, it's like I'm going to take my bath. I know I will not come out the same way. How many of you feel refreshed after a very good bath? I mean a very, I mean serious, not bath that you're in a hurry. I mean a bath that even your body testifies that something happened there. Don't tempt me to talk about bathing now, but we're not. But believe me, there are, there are bad things that is, is in a hurry. You are, you are on your way for something. And Now, let me tell you one of the things that happen in the place of prayer. Women will understand this a lot. You know how you marinate meat. Women, teach us please. That you place it in a, what they call that thing, and just leave it there. You leave it for how long? For sometimes overnight you leave it and just forget about it as though you don't you are not interested again and by the time you come up in the morning something would have happened what was outside finds its way inside so when you stay in that glory in the place of prayer it's like you are marinating the wisdom there is a transference of virtue I tell you, preachers, practice this and surprise yourself. Hallelujah. When you marinate, you cannot undo some things again. It's in you. Hallelujah. So everything that is in the Christ begins to filter into your spirit in the place of prayer and let me tell you this I don't know how you pray but it is not all the time that prayer is a noisy affair there are dimensions in prayer there is a realm in prayer called being still so that you will know the Bible said be still and you will know I'm not talking of sleeping are we together now when you, are, when you are asleep, you are not still. I'm talking of a point where God calms down because he wants to transmute realities to your spirit man. And sometimes you can lie down for 30 minutes, one hour. You're not distracted. You're not asleep. You don't even know the name of what you are learning. But you know something is being transferred to your spirit man. For a man of God, that can be the next series for six weeks. You are receiving there the reason why you cannot understand is because it's not coming through the gate of the mind it's a spirit communication like a refueling you're lying down in that place of prayer and you just know that you are incubating something mighty is when you get up and go to the place of study you come up with volumes of spiritual intelligence and people look at you as how does this man get this thing this is where it works. The boardroom of destiny is the place of prayer. You negotiate your possibilities in the place of prayer with worship. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to look unto Jesus for a life of victory and grace and power. I show you a formula. Show you a formula. Apostle, but I don't know how to sing extract some of the worship I, my, my lovely people here whilst I sat down I heard them just worship it was such a, an, a powerful atmosphere ask them to give you an mp3 get honorarium and give them and ask them 
Oh yeah. What you don't honor will not bless you even if you hear it. These are elementary things I shouldn't remind you again. And they sing something for you or play something like what this gentleman is playing and you're there. Thank you, Jesus. I'm declaring my love for you. Thank you for the honor of being called your own. Thank you. Thank you. Taking your mind away from all the noise and nonsense and the things that distract. And as you bless him, there is that spirit communication. You may not even know that time has gone. That's what happens when love happens truly. Time passes, you say. Are we together? And whilst you are there, the spirit of grace comes. Let me tell you how the next five years will be. And he, because he will show you things to come. And because you have respected his presence to create the atmosphere. If there is anything I have learned about working with the Holy Spirit. Is that his ministry is atmosphere dependent. It is not his responsibility to create the atmosphere. Do you do Valentine's in, uh, in South Africa? Apostle Felix said he's a partaker. So, I mean, he's giving you permission. So, you see how people go through the burden of setting that table? Sprinkle roses you may never touch, but it's still there. And go through that labor, they are creating an atmosphere. The reason why many of us do not have a rich fellowship in the place of prayer is because we don't respect the atmosphere. You believe in the Holy Spirit, but you do not respect his presence. It's not occurred to you that he is God. And you just release yourself. And allow that glory, that Shekinah, rest on you. Let's say you are preparing for a service, dear man of God. You are not in a hurry. Rest on you. You want to speak life to people? It's beyond Greek and Hebrew. You must draw realities from a realm that is not earthly. And he comes to you. He says, prepare this in the next five years. This is what is going to happen in South Africa. But since you have invested in my presence in the place of prayer, I hope you know that the assignment of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus. That is why seeing his form is not necessary. Because his assignment is to reveal the living Christ. Are we together now? He begins to tell you certain things. He begins to prepare. It may not make sense. I'm reminded of what God told me, Apostle Felix, many years ago, before the world knew about me, many years ago. And he told me, he said, son, I should put my audios then. He said, I should put it online and his angel will take it to the nations. And that's how he will announce me. Now, at that time, it didn't make any sense because social media was just in its infancy. You would, you would be unwise to do that kind of thing. But I was just putting the messages there because he gave me as a command. It came in the secret place. And with that formula, to God be the glory. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.